Hello, celebrity gossip enthusiasts. I'm Us Weekly's entertainment director, Travis Cronin, and you're tuned into Us Weekly's Hot Hollywood Podcast. The show where we break down all of the hottest celebrity gossip stories of the week. What you need to know at the little party. Have you heard about this? Yes, you have. And you know all the details because you're here. And after we were off, because I had the sniffles and Sarah was globetrotting, we are so happy to be back couldn't do this without them. Arbiter Beauty and Style, it's the lovely Gwen Flamberg. Well, hello. It's so nice to be here, Travis. I hope you're feeling better. I sure am. I am healed. Um, Just like a celebrity after they've released a memoir, I feel that I can leave the past behind me. And we have celebrity pop culture expert and just, you know, professional fangirl that I respect. Baby woman, Sarah Huron, welcome back from your international adventure. Wow, thank you so much. Speaking of celebrity memoirs, I did read Minka Kelly's book last week, and it was... I read a headline that said it was one of the best celebrity memoirs in recent history, but of course we had to ask oh, you wow. to Oh, wow. Well, confirm. that wasn't written by me. Um, no, it was good. It was really good. It was, um, it's a lot about her, like, actual life, though. Like, not a lot of celebrity gossip, and she lived quite the colorful life. I mean, her mom was, like, a drug addict. She had abusive yeah. step-parents. She had some not-so-great boyfriends. Um... And just like a wild ride. And it was, it was very like digestible, even though it was really dark. So I highly recommend it. And the Friday Night Light stuff, there was good tea with that. But then it kind of ends before she gets into like the Derek Jeter of it all or any of the guys. She's Trevor Noah. Linked to. Yeah, Trevor Noah. Obviously now she's with Dan uh, Reynolds from Imagine Dragon. So I was a little like, I would have could have used like a couple more chapters with a little more tea. But overall, it was like a very, kind of like Demi Moore's memoir, like a lot of like real life powerful stuff, not just like Jessica Simpson, even though Jessica Simpson had real life powerful stuff too, but Jessica Simpson just had so much tea. It's hard to compare, Um, but it was really good. And then after she dropped that book, Derek Jeter, baby number four surprise. That was exciting. He finally got his son. I know. So sweet. sweet. And Lily Allen's husband, isn't, wasn't he... In Imagine Dragons as well, or is he in another rock group that I'm getting confused? Probably. I know she, mm, probably, yeah. With yeah. him and Taylor Swift's new guy, Matt Healy, I sort of forget, you know, who they are. <laughs> oh, not not Lily Allen, the Victoria's Secret Angel, who we love. Lily oh, Aldridge. yeah, 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 Lily Aldridge. He's in Kings of Leon. See, I Leon. Those, those, you know, those white those white rock groups, they all look the same to me because I don't care because I only like pop and rap and R&B. But I'm happy that they're all in great relationships. And we're going to talk about a third one that I can't distinguish versus Taylor Swift's new man. But before we do that, let us get into our woes of the week. These are the stories that made our coasts you know what they did clutch their proverbial pearls because they were so aghast Gwen what made you clutch those proverbial pearls well guys the queen is back we're not talking about coronation I'm not confusing uh Prince <laughs> Paul, the late Queen Elizabeth the late great Queen Elizabeth my queen who I loved so very dearly no the queen queen B. Queen Bay to all of you. Beyonce is, is on tour. The Renaissance tour kicked off um, in Sweden. And the looks are just like, they are giving more than I ever could have imagined them to give. The pinnacle is a cat suit with well-placed hands. It's by Loewe. I just can't wait to see this show. But, you know, the dancers are a big part of it, Trav. Um, the dancers are everything. And I did love that Lueve by Jonathan Anderson, that hand going into her crotch. And we filmed with my favorite dancer on her tour, Honey Balenciaga of House Balenciaga, who came from the ballroom scene. And I loved her on the HBO show Legendary Max, which was like a dance competition for Vogue Houses. And our good friend, Honey Balenciaga, is finally becoming the star that she truly deserves to be. You know, she, the Beyonce has the song pure honey which honey balenciaga is featured in just watch the clip she's amazing but that fashion is just next level riding the horse above you know all Crazy. of the crowd in that like mugler yes. like robot outfet i mean the queen bee is back she to bless us all on. i mean it's it's just wild and i love watching all the clips because here she is she's back and she's dancing and she's you know she's doing all the things Still no visuals for the album yet, so I guess we'll see those soon. And uh, save your pennies, because I think tickets are like 
thousands and thousands of dollars. <laughs> At this point, when they went on, there were about a thousand, but they are going up, up, up. Because, you know, after they first debut their first show, ticket prices like exponentially go up. So hope we're feeling rich when Beyonce comes to town. Baby woman, what was your woe of this week? They're your oh last two weeks because you've been away. Double right. down. I got back and, you know, it's so important when you get back from a long trip to take the day you get back off to catch up on Bravo. It's just the number one life tip I can give anyone. If you can afford an extra Good. PTO day to get your life straight, go to the grocery store, do your laundry and watch seven hours of Bravo TV, you will feel better about coming back to work on a Friday before the weekend. <laughs> and I yesterday caught up on Vanderpump Rules near minutes before the reunion trailer of all reunion trailers drop. So I got to experience- You are a subhuman. Right. Hours and hours with Chris and Dodie on Watch Heavens Live in there, with Katie on Watch Heavens Live, all of it at once, which was also crazy. I mean, the fact that that- episode that aired on Wednesday was supposed to be the finale. It would have been such a good finale already. Like it would have been amazing. That confrontation between uh, Raquel and Katie with Terry Maloney, her mom getting involved and Sandoval inserting himself and Tom Schwartz hiding in the corner. Um, it was just Ariana hysterically crying, Raquel having the audacity to ask Ariana about her sex life with Tom, seemingly trying to like get a picture of whether they were going to break up because I'm sure Sandoval was telling him they would and the disappointment on her face, like endless, wild, oh my God, what's happening on my TV screen. But then the trailer drops and you have Lala and James just coming for them. James dropping the line of all lines. You're a warm with a mustache, calling them poo-poo heads. Ariana telling Tom, you don't even deserve to look at me. Um, just the confrontation, we find out the physical altercation that almost was, was between Sandoval and DJ James Kennedy. Just Which Tom they'll never punch each other in their faces. They're too oh, vain. Absolutely. The moneymaker is like, please. Andy Cohen. Don't punch that my, worm with a mustache. My cards. When his cards got destroyed amid the almost confrontation, like the trailer, I watched it maybe seven times. I, I, I can't get enough. What a time to be alive. If you have not watched Vanderpump Rules, it is, uh, you maybe have time to fit in the entire series before the reunion coming up. Talk about I don't know if you space it out over the couple, couple weeks, but yeah. it's just the best reality TV event to happen in our lifetimes. I mean, between the, the last season of Succession and this season of Vanderpump Rules, like, I feel like we're living in a peak time to be alive. And I know that's dramatic, but like, I don't think I'm ever going to take it back. Like, I think this little stretch of television is, is peak. Like, I don't know where we go from here. Uh, there is nowhere we can go. Um, just 10 years down the road when Sandoval eventually cheats on Raquel again and does the same thing to her, maybe we'll be back. Yeah. We will have to see. Well, my woe of the week also seconding Vanderpump everything. I'm yelling at the screen like a crazy person. Um, I get that that's just it. Um, but my woe of the week goes to Britney Spears, whose memoir, celebrity memoir, shout out to the, the buzzword drink if you hear it, I guess. Britney's celebrity memoir coming out um, was supposed to come out soon within this year. Um, but now Page Six is reporting that several A-listers have sent legal letters to cease and desist Britney from releasing her book. Obviously, we can all assume that it is Justin Timberlake primarily, maybe a dash of Ben Affleck and Colin Farrell in there. But it seemed like it wasn't her family that was the ones pushing this book, that it was all the A-listers in the book and I just I need it I want it don't stall it and I hope she doesn't have to amend any of this because while you know Britney's take is her own truth the way she speaks on Instagram is like very harsh and it's her true experience but I just hope we find out and I'm talking about the royal we I will be on it trying to find out which A-listers was trying to stop Britney from publishing her book because I want to read it and I know Gwen does too I do I do weren't there rumors that she slept with like an older A-list gentleman <sighs> Um, the, the what well, we know, Ben Affleck, Colin Farrell, I think we know with certainty they've was spotted out together in the early 2000s when she broke up with JT. Um, but I don't know if either of them, I mean, Ben Affleck was a little older than her, but I wouldn't, you know, say older. So maybe that there is like a secret older person. We, we had this debate where we were throwing out names at one point and we were thinking like, Gerard Butler, Russell Crowe, like, could it be someone of that generation? I don't know. Yeah, Russell Crowe back in the day, definitely a good shot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, let her release the book. 
All right, well, let's move on to another starlet dating one of those guys in one of those bands that I'm not familiar with, but because he's dating some from dating someone famous, I will get familiar real quick. I am talking about Taylor Swift and Matt Healy. Now, if you are a huge Taylor Swift fan or just a pop culture junkie like all of us, you will know that Taylor and Matt briefly dated almost 10 years ago, but a source tells us the timing just didn't work out. Now, Matt Healy was seen during her Nashville concert on May 6th. I'm hanging out in the VIP tent while she, you know, performed. And then they made their way back to her condo in Nashville and they arrived at 12.30 a.m. And he spent the night. Hey. So this is the first time since 2014 that we've seen them hanging out. Of course, this comes on the heels um, of her broken possible engagement. We think engagement, but definitely a long relationship with actor Joe Alwyn. And just this week, Taylor and Matt were spotted um, kissing at Casa Cipriani this past Thursday in New York, where they, quote, sat next to each other at a banquet in the lounge. Jack Antonoff was with them. Security was around them. And a source tells us that they were introduced by mutual friends. Most likely, Jack introduced them. And I, while I'm just starting to learn about Matt Healy, I remember he was the, like, hot guy on TikTok trend for a long time. But that's really all I know about him, other than my friends who like his band. What do you guys think of this new hookup? Classic rebound relationship. I think that she's got to have a little bit of fun and have a little bit of that romantic energy since she just went through a very public breakup. I'm sticking to that. Yeah, I think um, I knew nothing about Matt Healy until this broke last week and then I found like 75 Twitter threads about how problematic he is Ooh. um he's made a lot with like of, a teenage girl right well he one he like makes out with his fans at concerts and that's yeah. like I think consensual so I guess there's nothing wrong with that but he like brings people on stage every concert and makes out with them pretty graphically um and then taylor swift actually performed at an um 1975 concert in january when she sang anti-hero live for the first time and at that concert he didn't kiss anyone because he said i couldn't kiss someone in front of taylor swift but then there's just all these like jokes he's made over the years on podcasts and on twitter and instagram where like he when like kanye was making all those anti-semitic comments like he was making comments that i think was supposed to be like joking about them but kind of read like he was co-signing something like I don't know he just had a lot of very controversial problematic things and that worries me um he's definitely like the bad boy kind of vibe but I'm surprised she would risk her reputation just because we know how much it means to her um over the years but then the other part of me is like oh this could be fun like let's have a public relationship let's get messy let's you know, get out there, T Swift. And we know that they, from what I understand, they met through Jackie Antonoff. So that makes sense. Um, I I love seeing her out and about so much. Um, it's pretty wild to like see that they're mouthing messages to each other seemingly during shows. He made a comment like this song's about you. I love you, like mouthed it. And then like a week later, she did said the same thing. You know, this one's about you. So it's definitely like she's she's out there, they're holding hands, she's she's doing cryptic messages, and this is after six years of barely getting a blurry photo of her and Joe Alwyn. So part of me is like, let's go love this rebound with a bad boy. But another part of me is like, maybe a bad boy with less problematic tendencies might've been the move, but I guess we'll see. Yeah. At 2020, he was doing a red carpet interview and he took the mic and he started to say, um, I don't think that it's a racist thing to say before his bandmates cut him off. And Usually when people preface that, um, it definitely is going to be racist or problematic to people. Um, and yeah, he sort of has this like anti-Black uh, Lives Matter, sort of overly touchy with his fans. Because I was watching some of those videos at the time when like Matt Healy was everyone's favorite like TikTok boyfriend when he was doing this. And it was like a, a little, a little much. Um, yeah, I mean, right after the murder of George Floyd, he took to Twitter to say, if you truly believe that all lives matter, you need to stop facilitating the ends of black ones. Um, and just a few of those, and it seems very untailor because well, you're right. Seems, wait, that tweet didn't seem bad. No, it was not that um, way. It was that was that was like a fine one, but I think he's just um 
I was getting a little too into it. Um, and some people did find that tweet a little problematic. Um, and there's like all these other videos like of him talking about Black Lives Matter um, and sort of like inappropriate behavior towards fans that was all happening at the same time in 2020. So, so I think it was just that combo. But I mean, nothing really bad. I'm going to hold a candle and because I really like the it fact was that all they the, gave like- him- Kanye anti like he did like the Hitler sign or something at a concert as a joke I don't know there's some just like google it there's a lot of Twitter threads about Matt Healy and it's not great when you were saying problematic you really meant problematic yeah it's nothing more problematic than the Heiling Hitler Um, there really is not um well good luck allegedly I I don't know these were all just Twitter things I read so (laughs) (laughs) well we will do a deep dive next week and really get to the bottom of this because right now I just knew him as a former boyfriend that she dated sort of you know got wild on stage but that was his persona and I really liked that that someone that she's dated before who's in the industry but people who are like half Heiling Hitler oh that's a big pass for me um so well, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's talk about another couple who I really, I'm now starting to sort of feel bad for because they're always in the press for uh, the husband of this couple always seeming over it. I am talking about 2.0. It's Jenjamin this time, JLo and Ben Affleck. Now, they, of course, had that tense moment at award shows on a couple of red carpets. He's talked about that and said that he was, you know, tired and jet lagged. But now they've had another tense appearance at the mother premiere, uh, JLo's new Netflix movie about a mother who avenges um, her child through guns. I love J-Lo as a mother going up there. Like, Enough is one of my favorite movies. But that is not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the red carpet. So if you watch the video of J-Lo and Ben from the red carpet, it is a very dense, uh, tense situation, dense and tense. But Daily Mail got a lip reader to go on, and it sort of makes me feel a lot better about it. The lip reader um, appeared to ask, uh, J-Lo appeared to ask Ben via the lip reader um, if she was showing too much cleavage, prompting him to say that she was fine, and then they adjusted their pose. Um, And then he appeared to tell his wife to come closer before leaning into her ear and saying, don't worry, babe. That's fine. That's great. They're having a talk about, you know, are my boobs fine? That's great. You go over here. That's a tense situation for anyone on a red carpet with a thousand photographers staring at you. So I'm a little happy about that. But of course, um, the Grammys in 2023, where he looks so sad, I, I, I think it's all good. I'm glad the lip reader sort of like confirms that they weren't in a heated argument in front of the general press but it's a little weird that whenever j-lo brings ben affleck anywhere he sort of looks like angry tense and over it it's just sort of an unfortunate situation for jenjamin did you guys watch the video it was sort of hard to watch i thought the video of him like slamming the door was worse well so after that then he slammed the door yes yeah i don't i think it was like they i don't know if it was the day before the premiere or the day after the premiere but it was also this week and they were like walking and maybe he was just annoyed that there was you know like people paparazzi or something but he opens the door for her like slams it and like just looks annoyed beyond belief and i just saw these tweets that were like this is proof that even when you have it all like you're not happy or whatever and i just feel like they can say what they want but all these quotes about how lovey-dovey and how amazing it is to be back together and how they inspire each other. And then every time we see them, they just look angry. And whether that's because there's paps or whatever, it just doesn't seem like a realistic way to live. Like, I feel like these faces, they're adding up is all I'm saying. Yeah, it's, I think that these two have so much love for each other when it's just them in their little world together, home and, you know, together but they just kind of, I think it's really difficult for them to exist in the world. And it's kind of the problems that were there from the beginning, the first time around. And it's, it's a bummer. I mean, I hope that um, we're wrong. (laughs) I hope that there is no salmon by this smoke and that I hope she's just like, are my boobs in, you know, great. And I hope that that door sort of just uh, was on a problematic hinge and slammed itself. Mm. We're going to, again, give them the benefit of the doubt before we find out more, mainly because I am excited to talk about the lady whose hips have never once lied, even under oath, Shakira. Now, Shakira was with professional F-boy and professional football player uh, Gerald Piquet, um, who, you know, we all despise collectively as 
as one world. It can really bring us together because he cheated on her and sources tell us for a long time he was cheating on her. Um, but now Shakira is uh, really throwing herself into it at the Formula One races in Miami that so many uh, celebrities and the Real Housewives of Miami are attending right now. So there was uh, photos and videos of her hitting it off with Tom Cruise at the Grand Prix uh, by where all the cars are in the VIP section. And there's lots of rumors going around. Sources telling a lot of people that Tom Cruise is very interested in Shakira. Maybe he drafted the contract and brought it with him to the game um but the sources say that he is smitten with her but shakira shakira went off and uh, got on a boat with lewis hamilton who has dated a slew of celebrities nicole scherzinger and he's just like i guess one of the most famous guys um in the car racing world so good for him and good for shakira so he and shakira met at cipriani restaurant in miami after sunday's event right after she was spotted talking to Tom Cruise. And it must have gone well because they both made their way to uh, Lewis's uh, first house and then boat. And they were seen taking off to a yacht. So I am very happy to see Shakira in an entanglement with two huge A-listers and glad she has her eggs in more than just the Tom Cruise basket because while it does pay well, I don't see anyone coming out of it happy from a Tom Cruise relationship. What do you guys um, think of Shakira, Shakira's, you know, new menses? To me, Shakira can do no wrong. Let her go for what she wants and uh, well, we'll see if she gets it, right? Yeah, I don't think there's she's dating Tom Cruise. Um, and I hope she's not. I don't think anyone should date Tom Cruise, to be honest. I, I think she, she needs to repair her um reputation a little bit. She had all those legal issues, taxes, mm-hmm. you know, very, very public split from Gerard Piquet. And I feel like we've seen this a million times over. This is Hollywood history. You kind of get with Tom Cruise, even sort of tangentially from afar. Maybe you're flirting. Maybe you're even just talking about the contract. (laughs) And a lot of attention, a lot of kinds of fame comes along with that. So I'm going to file that there. Yeah, fame and terror for what things to come. Um, I really, I Lewis Hamilton, while he's like, you know, dated so many famous women, um, I think that that is a much better option for oh, her than so Tom hot. Cruise. Yeah, he's <laughs> so hot. So hot. He is wildly good looking. He's just like, uh, yeah, he's got it. Shakira is wildly hot. I really hope this works out for them. So we'll see if there's pictures of her leaving her yacht posted today and keep you posted. But I'm really, really um, rooting for them. Um, Someone who I uh, wasn't rooting for, or maybe was, was Kim Zolciak and Croy. Now, Kim to my core. uh, So, Sarah, why don't you tell us why it shook you to your core and why finances were probably you know heavily involved because there was a big million plus lien on their house and their house was almost auctioned off for two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars um but you know as a fan of kim and croy and their 1100 children what were your thoughts I mean, fan is a loose word, like just fascinated by the uh, beer, okay. Zolciak Beerman bunch, because I think this is one of those ones that we watched Kim meet Croy on season three of the Real Houses of Atlanta, like 13 years ago, after we watched her like date B- Big Poppy and be, you know, a very polarizing figure on Real Houses of Atlanta and in the Bravo universe. And then we watch Hermie Croy. They get the Don't Be Tardy for the wedding spinoff. We learn in that that she has a tough relationship with her mom. He's like estranged with his family because of Kim. But then, you know, they Brielle and Ariana finally get this stepfather who's adopting them. They change their last names to Beerman. It's like this, this, this loving family. They add four more kids to the mix. Um, and then Don't Be Tardy ran for eight seasons. So if you watch Bravo, whether you watch Don't Be Tardy or not, you catch a marathon. You're, you know, Kim and Croy were just kind of like one of those couples and they were obsessed with each other. Like Kim is very particular. She's a little odd. She's high maintenance beyond. Um, and Croy seemingly like loved that about her and yeah. unironically like liked her songs and her wigs and her red solo cups. 
Um, <laughs> so when something like that happens, it's like to fall for him, it feels like the shock. So for them to stay, to, to for them to get together, have all these kids, him to like be estranged with his family, be on TV for all these years and seemingly be like strong and going strong. Then for two years after don't be tardy to be canceled. You know, I remember a couple months ago, I was talking about their house and we definitely weren't buying the fact that everything was going to be okay after they said it was like a mistake, a clerical right. error. If you know anything about Kim Zolciak, you know, she's, you know, earning and spending simultaneously. Um, so, you know, that show going away, it makes sense that all of a sudden there's financial issues. And I guess seemingly that has led to marriage woes. Um, they have both filed for divorce and, at the same day, TMZ reported that they owe more than a million dollars in back taxes. They Ugh. listed their date of separation as April 30th. Um, the documents were filed on May 8th. They have their sons, KJ, who's 11, Cash, 10, and twins, Kaya and Kane, 9. Um, Brielle and Ariana are 26 and 27, respectively, and not technically Croy's, but he did adopt them, like I said. So if they want to change their name from Beerman, I assume they would have to legally do that. Um, a source told us that financial burdens have put a strain on their relationship between the tax debt and other financial issues. It's been difficult, but the tax debt was definitely the straw that broke the camel's back in their marriage. Right now, they're fighting over their house that allegedly the state of Georgia might own anyway. Um, um, there was an auction on their house that was scheduled for March, but was later canceled. Um, Kim is seeking temporary and permanent sole custody of the kids, but oh no, Croy is seeking Croy is. sole custody of the kids. Yeah, which I thought was sort of wild. That is wild. Yeah, but why? Why? Smoke why? salmon there, guys. Yeah. Smoke salmon. So and Croy he, wants and he the kids. changed his Instagram, Instagram bio, bio right after that was very telling to me if you want full custody of your 1400 children and you her song of course the ring did it mean a thing that she still is i have never sang in the right key and nor has she and her so I think song I do, google me and her song and party for the party google all me. three get referenced in this bio change that reads my ring men a thing husband father to six perfect munkins munchkins athlete because in case you forget he was on the atlanta falcons but now no one cares for like a day yeah you can google me and see i wasn't tardy for the party so he really thought he did something there <laughs> he really did but like saying the first change in the bio was my ring did mean a thing and maybe i'm reading too much into that but that that says you know i feel like that's a dig towards her but if he's just doing the triple song reference maybe it didn't mean a thing like my ring meant a thing therefore yours did not that's right, what but i he first kept saw there. He kept husband in his bio and that Kim and Croy have since unfollowed each other on Instagram and Brielle also unfollowed Croy. So this is one of those moments when it's like, I don't need, don't, I didn't need don't be tardy the last couple of years, but now I'm like, maybe we shouldn't have canceled it. Cause I would have loved to watch this. Mm, totally. Well, I, I bet you that there will be a new show. I hope so. I think she'll get back on housewives of Atlanta because mm -hmm. they're still currently filming the season that just premiered. So I think we'll have Kim and maybe even like a little Nini resurgence. This could be like a mm -hmm. Vanderpump Rules where we start I don't to think... see more Kristen Dowdy and Jackson Brittany because we thought they were gone forever. And I know Nini sued Bravo. But yeah, I don't she's think not Nini's in their best graces. I don't think Nini's ever coming back after that lawsuit because Andy, Andy Cohen, I just started his book and he um, makes it clear that that bridge is closed for him and Nini. Okay. Um, but Kim, I could see like filming a scene with Sheree if the price was right, because she needs the money clearly. And her and Sheree are actually still friends. And Sheree is like front and center already in the season of Atlanta. But um, yeah, there's all those reports that Jackson and Brittany are coming back to Vanderpump Rules next season. Is that true? Because I still don't believe it. I still do not believe it. Seeing the Kristen Dowdy on Vanderpump Rules literally had me wanting to jump out the window and I was aghast. It was more uh, shocking than any horror movie I've ever the, seen. Her feet that was a jump the scare. Her feet and then seeing her face was more than Jason, more than Freddie. There has never been a villain to scare me more than Kristen Dowdy taking the stage. Um, so Doty. I think Kim Zolciak could do the same thing. Doty has <laughs> been so long I know. <laughs> um, that she is back. Um, well, let's talk about um, a lovely reunion, a, a marriage, really, between Chriselle and G Flip. They are married. Now, if you don't know who Chriselle is, you should, because she's just uh, in there for her personal life and drama always. She is a star, a star on Selling Sunset, and she was, of the course, star. married to Justin Hartley. Okay, sorry, Sarah says the star, and I well, would now that, now that Christine is gone, we can't even remember the names of anyone besides Chriselle and Christine on Selling Sunset. <laughs> Sunset. Um, 
Yeah. Wow. That's a really good point. Mary. Yep. Mary's one of them, but she is the star of Selling Sunset. By the way, I've watched most of the new season and it's pretty amazing. Um, That's on my list for the weekend, those screeners. You will like it. It is very, very good. Now, Chriselle was dating her boss, um, Jason, who was the uh, owner of their real estate group for a long time. (laughs) They were going to have a kid together. He was a lifelong bachelor. It was sort of the whole story's line last season was that Chriselle was changing Jason. He's finally going to be able to get married and maybe even have a kid. Everyone was so excited. Cut to them, come tumbling down. They break up. And now Chriselle is marrying Australian rapper, singer. I don't really know how they, they, they seem like a singer, but sort of like a rapper g flip which was such a departure g flip was as has they them pronouns was born female and is dramatically younger than chriselle so it was just sort of like out of left field for all of us but they're so in love you can see on this new season that they are really obsessed with each other and now that they are married g flip is featured on the new season G Flip is featured. They are all in the recording studio together. Um, I can be your man. G Flip is all over the new season. You see lots of people talk about how much they love G. Um, and now they are married at the end of this reel that Chriselle posted. The wedding seems to be sort of like an elopement adjacent, you know, not a lot of pomp and circumstance and pageantry in this. Um, though the, this couple first met on Halloween in 2021 while Chriselle was still dating Jason of the Oppenheim group and G Flip was also in a relationship. Then they separated for their partners and they really just became inseparable ever since. Um, in May 2022, Chriselle confirmed um, her re- romance with G Flip um, during the Sun Selling Sunset reunion. And yes, I can confirm that G will be on the newest season. And I'm happy that they're married because Chriselle just seemed, she, Justin Hartley cheated on her with um, this woman that he had done a soap opera with from a long time ago. Allegedly. That was crushing. Allegedly. Uh, okay. He left her for this woman that he knew for many, many years. I don't know if as innocent as we, you know, give her credit for. But anyway, continue. Oh, all right. Well, then we don't feel bad for Chriselle and she's a terror no. and a hex on her marriage. No, that's not what I'm saying. I just feel like when I remember watching those seasons and being like Justin Heartless, like down with him. And then I don't know. I feel like there was all those rumors about her and Glebon dancing with the stars and his marriage falling apart conveniently when they were partnered. And I just, that was a smoked salmon one for me. Um, happy for Chriselle, Chriselle and G Flip. I wish nothing, I don't wish anything bad on either of them. I remember it was shocking when she announced that they were dating at the reunion that was like what is happening yeah. did but not have that on my bingo card did, did not, not have right. that on my card totally came out of left field right and she yeah. Is, yeah so but ever since then she has posted a lot about g flip they're very much like in your face on instagram in a mm-hmm. way that i think you cannot deny that they are very uh crazy for each other so yeah. happy for you i know that she like really wanted to be a mom i did read her memoir under construction which was one of the worst ones i've ever read especially knowing <laughs> that how much tea could have been spilled when her life she barely gets into the justin hartley stuff and then she dated her boss and now then she ended up marrying someone non-binary as she wants to have a children so badly and i know that there's ways for her to have a family with g flip but again g flip is much younger than her so i'm just really interested in where we're gonna go from here with these two happy for them but i just wish i don't know i feel like there's just so much more to the story but again i was shocked when they first started dating but ever since then it's very g flip chrishell heavy on instagram so not a shock that they got married It is. And while the um, review embargo is not up, so I can't tell you, I will say that they do talk about their future family, how they're going to get there and how Chriselle feels about it. Um, You know, something that Jason was not involved in. So we will see much more of that play out. Um, Speaking of, you know, starting a family through some struggles, Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker, we we reported, we actually broke the news, hey, last year that Kourtney Kardashian was starting IVF with Travis Barker before their amazing Italian wedding. And Courtney uh, posted on Instagram a little IVF body she posted last Wednesday um, as a tribute for her pal's birthday. Um, we can confirm that they are starting IVF cycles again. And they tr- they took a break from trying to have a baby while they plan their Italian nuptials. But they are back at it and trying to prego up. So I am happy for them. They uh, each have this, like, the Brady Bunch up in there. So, you know, they each got a few. And they're looking to add another one. 
happy she for them. Beautiful babies. She's got some beautiful babies with uh, the Lord, Scott Disick. And um, <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if this new baby just comes out of the womb, you know, the way that the Kardashian girls like, grab their babies and it had like tattoos from men. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just doing like a death metal rocker hand sign, tongue out, uh, yeah. trying to make out with whoever doctor delivered them, I think would be a very appropriate and be like, you know, they don't wrap them in a towel. It would be a piece of black leather. True. I think would be very appropriate. Now, the last thing that we have to talk about is Prince Harry. He's not the heir. He's the spare. And he was very sparse at the coronation. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts because we were all wondering, well, we confirmed that Prince Harry was going to attend. We were wondering if Meghan Markle was going to attend. Sources told us that she was staying back because it was Archie's birthday. And Prince Harry came in and was there for 28 hours for the hottest of seconds before flying back out. He flew in their commercial um, and flew out, made it in time for Archie's birthday at 6 p.m. on Archie's birthday, which I think was very, very cute. Um, but sort of just like the way he walked in and the time he spent there, um, it's like, why did you even go? It sort of felt like he went, he went. just so people could say that he went and I not so. vilify him. I don't think that. I don't. And you know how I have very strong feelings about all of this. I think he did an incredible job. He went, I don't think that he went to save faith for himself. I think that he went because it was the right thing to do, to support his father and to support his family in this, you know, thousands year old tradition. So I give him huge props for kind of like, not putting the attention on himself. He acted with class and with grace. He kept his head high and he did it. You know, I would have, you know, obviously I really would have liked to have seen him talking with William and hanging out and kinds of like some warmth, but that's not where they're at right now. He did a lot of damage and they're all going to have to work through that. But I think that the cowardly thing would have been to just stay away. I, I kind of give him huge props for going, keeping his head held high and like doing the right thing without garnering any unnecessary attention on himself. Baby props. woman, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, I think if he didn't go, he would have regretted it for a lot of reasons, both the way it looks and the way he would feel about his own. He could never take that back. Um it was kind of funny to me to like see him there and then see him at the airport like two hours later, still in his uh, suit. Um, they put him in the third row with with Beatrice and Eugenie, which kind of makes sense. But it it just feels like it is such a disconnect. Like it's so obvious that he, you know, you see Will and Kate and their kids in the front row all decked out, part of everything, and Harry a few rows back. I I think I don't think you can really you can't criticize what he did. I think he took the high road in his own way. And I think from what yep. we've heard him and Charles have communicated, it's really more him and will that haven't, um, post spare. So I think, you know, good for him. I think it's a little odd to make the trip for a couple hours, but if you have the means, who are we to judge? It is also Archie's birthday. Um, and I think, you know, Megan, if she was there, it would have been a, a, a fire, a shit show, a shit show. So oh, I, yeah. I think it makes sense. Um, I think for me, what really stole the show was the kids. They looked really cute. Um, and I loved seeing, you know, Charlotte and Kate and they're like matching tiaras. Oh, um, it, was heavenly. it was heavenly. The yeah. fashion was amazing. Yeah. You know, I do have some things to say about, you know, the tiaras and this has been widely reported, but you know, Charles did not want diamonds on anything. Part of that is because diamonds come from the earth and he is a big environmental person. Um, but also I think he was trying to- Because they're stolen jewels from colonized nations. There's, there's that. <laughs> uh, there's that too. Um, and also, you know, the opulence of it all. But like they, they commissioned bespoke crystal tiaras to be made- it would have been kind of better if there was like, how about we just reuse something that's in that skating rink size uh, vault where they keep all the crown jewels. 
But I did think that it was gorgeous. I loved Charlotte the most. I thought that Charlotte's little outfit, which was like giving me Princess Leia, you know, she's got <laughs> she's got style, she's got grace, she's got all of it. Um, you know, Kate is the picture perfect. She knows her role and she plays it really well. I thought that they all looked amazing. The fashion was great. Yeah, she did. Those robes and like the accolades and the crowns like sort of looked a little silly when you saw the entire family in them. But I mean, if there's one place for pageantry and costumes. A coronation. Like, yeah, this this wasn't like the royal wedding. This isn't like you're not going to be getting fashion <laughs> maybe from the after party like the carnation concert there was some fun stuff that happened yeah. but like this is not a red carpet event this is a carnation it is historical it is cultural and like not messing about but it that's is. Not for prince louis he is my uh, all-time fit prince louis i'm so sad that they didn't let him come to day two after his clapping stole center stage and I don't know why Prince Harry's attendance sort of rubbed me the wrong way. I think because he was there for such a short amount of time, it felt like, okay, now you can't say that I wasn't here. I look good. You still look bad. Um, but, you know, maybe you guys have turned the, like my thoughts a little bit that he was doing the right thing to be there for his dad and that his presence would have been greatly missed and overshadowed. And I think Megan did the right thing by staying home too, because her presence would have overshadowed them well. So maybe this is the first time in a long time where I applaud both Harry and Megan's <laughs> prowesses on this coronation day. Good for them, good for everybody, but mainly good for the kids because they really stole the show. I also need very many answers about why presumably Prince Charles uh, chose reflections from the Mulan soundtrack for Nicole Scherzinger to perform because all I could think of was Prince Charles staring at himself in a pool of water, <laughs> bracing his face, asking, when will my reflection show who I really am inside? <laughs> I don't really understand. You know, the Katy Perry songs sort of were like uplifting, but like reflections, I, I just didn't, I didn't understand that at all. And I need Nicole Scherzinger to speak out. And I hope that that is uh, Camila's favorite song or something. Yeah, I mean, even <laughs> Katy Perry, like, singing firework like that has this line about the fourth of july yeah i mean i guess they're over it now but i don't know the whole thing was like chaotic but whatever yeah, it's like an american like the colonies pump up song and then like mulan right and then like we just seen a picture of him and with then, like, sword, Lionel Richie like not... cutting himself bangs and camila Lionel taking Richie... off her makeup oh my god Nine hours <laughs> not being able to hit like the notes and hello anymore like it was kind of tragic honestly the concert but also like Whatever. It was also tragic that, like, how, no offense, like, old Charles and Camilla looked. Like, the whole oh, thing was yeah. just, like, eek. I just thought Charles looked like, I, I, it's, he should have ab abdicated and just Ugh. let William and Kate kind of take it. People would have been so much more excited. Oh, it's yeah. sort of like in the third Hunger Games movie when all of the tributes are reaped and then they're like, you know, these people were like in their 70s and 80s, like in this pop and circumstance, just like doesn't show the vitriol or like the vitality that like people are sort of looking for, for people whose only jobs it is, is to show up and sort of like speak and be a beacon of like hope and admiration for people. And ain't nobody looking at Charles and saying, that's who I want to be, man. <laughs> Sadly, but I, again, I hope his reflection shows who he truly is inside because that's what he wants us to take from this. Yeah. Well, thank you to uh, Mulan and thank you to Gwen and Sarah for helping me spill this piping hot celebrity this week. Again, this is Travis Cronin of Us Weekly's Hot Hollywood Podcast with your weekly peek into the glamour glitter fashion favorite for favorite celebrities. Because after all, guys, you know what they are? They're yeah. just, just like... like uh, yes they are we will be back next week with a new episode we can't wait to see you then bye bye for more news content and exclusive interviews make sure to hit the sub like and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com